For 300 years, higher education has played a leading role in the advancement of American civilization. No country in history so early perceived the importance of that role, and none has derived such widespread benefits from it. Colleges moved westward with the frontier and carried with them the seeds of learning. When the university idea was transplanted from Europe, it spread across the nation with extraordinary speed. Today, our universities are the standard bearers of our whole system of education. They are the mainstays of the profession. They are the prime source of our competence in science and the arts. The names of their graduates crowd the honor rolls of two world wars and of the nation's peacetime affairs. By every test of war and peace, they have proved themselves indispensable instruments of cultural progress and national welfare. In the United States, there is a greater degree of equality of opportunity in higher education than anywhere else in the world. A larger proportion of the Americans study in universities and colleges than any other people. These universities have shown and continue to show greater responsiveness to the needs of our society than their European counterparts. They have equipped our people with the varied skills and sciences essential to the development of a pioneer country. They have imparted the shape and coherence of the American pioneer country to formless immigrant groups. American ideals have been strengthened. The great cultural tradition of the West has been broadened and enriched by their teaching and example. Modern knowledge of ourselves and of our university has been nurtured in the universities. The scientific, technological, medical and surgical advances of our time were born in them. They have supplied intellectual capital as essential to our society as financial capital is to our industrial enterprise. They have more than justified the faith of the public in our distinctive system of higher education. They have proved themselves dynamic forces of American progress. A university is the institutional embodiment of an urge for knowledge that is in human nature and as old as the human race. It is inherent in every individual. The search that it inspires is an individual affair. Men vary in the intensity of their passion for the search for tr knowledge as well as in their competence to pursue it. History, therefore, presents us with a series of scholarly pioneers who advanced our knowledge from age to age and increased our ability to discover new knowledge. Great scholars and teachers drew students to them, and in the Middle Ages, a few such groups organized themselves into the first universities. A university man must therefore be hospitable to an infinite variety of skills and viewpoints, relying upon open competition among them as the surest safeguard of truth. Its whole spirit requires investigation, criticism, and presentation of ideas in an atmosphere of freedom and mutual confidence. This is the real meaning of academic freedom. It is essential to the achievement of its ends that the faculty of a university be guaranteed this freedom by its governing board and that the reasons for the guarantee be understood by the public. To enjoin universe uniformity of outlook upon a university faculty would put a stop 
to learning at the source. To censor individual faculty members would put a stop to learning at its outlet. For these reasons, a university does not take an official position of its own, either on disputed questions or matters of public policy. It refrains from so doing, not only in its own, but in the public interest to capitalize the search for knowledge for the benefit of society, to give the individuals pursuing the search the freest possible scope and the greatest possible encouragement in their efforts to preserve the learning of the past and advance learning in the present. The scholar who pursues this search on these terms does so at maximum advantage to society. So does the student. To the scholar lie open new discoveries in the whole field of knowledge. To his student, the opportunity of sharing in those discoveries and at the same time developing his powers of rational thought, intelligent judgment, and an understanding use of acquired knowledge. Thus, essential qualities of learning are combined with essential qualities of citizenship in a free society.